In this video, I'm going to show you how to query and transform large amounts of customer data using Shopify's GraphQL API and Python. We're going to cover three things. First, we're going to look at how we manage nested GraphQL queries. Then we're going to look at how we query data in bulk. And finally, we're going to see how we load this data into Pandas. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the API key needed to query the GraphQL API. To the left in the Shopify admin dashboard, click apps and then go to apps and sales channel settings. Then you click develop apps and here you can either create a new app or select one you already created. To get the API key, we select an app and then we go to API credentials and this is where you'll find the token that we need to access the data. If you are creating a new application, make sure that you are granting the application the rights to read order data, customer data and product data. To get started with the code, we're going to install the required libraries and put the merchant name and access token into an environment file. The first piece of code we need is going to take the merchant name and the access token and then instantiate the Shopify GraphQL client. And I'm going to take this code and put it in a separate file to keep the main file clean. Then we're going to do some basic queries. We're going to fetch customers. And then we're going to do a nested query where we fetch customers, orders, and line items. And these are basic GraphQL queries formulated as multi-line Python string variables. So let's try to run this code and do the first queries. I've created a separate file with the Shopify client, which I'm going to import into the main notebook. So let's try to run the first customer query. We get the Shopify client and then we execute the query defined by the variable customers. And then we use JSON loads on the response. And this works perfectly and it's pretty fast. And then we're going to do the same thing with the nested query. So we're going to replace the query variable customers with the nested query. And then we get a nested object of customer data returned. So this also works. These are basic nested queries where we extract a few fields for every object. If you want to extract more fields and you typically do in an application, the size of the query quickly blows up. And let me show you what that might look like. Here's an example of a nested customer query where we extract information about customers, orders, and line items and as you can see the size of this blows up so i actually like to use placeholders python placeholders to to keep things a bit more manageable we can break up the nested query string into substrings so we can break it up into line items orders and customers and then inject line items into orders and orders into customers using placeholders And note that we need to use the double curly brackets notation here for orders and customers because the query itself is wrapped in curly brackets. And we can now put each subquery variable into its own Python file so that the code remains readable when the number of fields increase. And all we have to do is just import line items into orders and orders into customers. And if we run this, we see that we get the exact same thing as before. So far, so good. Before I show you how we get this data into Pandas, we just need to solve one more problem. So far, we've only extracted three customers, three orders, and three line items. But if we go into orders and we change the number of orders that we fetch, so we get the first 10 orders instead of the first three orders, and we do the same thing for customers. So let's try to run this. I'm just going to restart the notebook. And here we have the problem. This query is now too big, so we can't fetch the data in the same way we fetch the data in the first couple of examples. And what we need to do is we need to fetch this data as a bulk operation. To do that, we create a bulk operation 
run query mutation that takes the nested query as an argument. And once we execute this bulk operation query, it's going to run in the background. So we need an additional query that allows us to check the status. And this additional query, which I've called bulk status, allows us together with the bulk ID that we get when we execute the bulk operation to query the GraphQL API and check if a bulk operation has finished. Once we import the bulk query code, we can then execute the nested query from before as a bulk operation. And here we see that when we execute this bulk operation, we get a bulk operation ID in return, which we can use to fetch the status of the query. We'll use the bulk status function, which you saw to do that. And here we see that the status of the bulk operation is completed, so we can fetch the data from the returned URL, which leaves us with the final task. We need to write some code that allows us to extract the data from this URL. We do that by opening the URL with URL lib and then looping through the response, identifying customers, orders, and line items, adding these to lists, and then creating the data frames from those lists. And all of this is wrapped in a function. Let me just add this function to the notebook, and then we'll run the fetch bulk function with the status as an argument. And then we have a data frame with the customers, their ID, first name and last name. We also have a data frame with the orders and the fields we extracted from the order object. And we have a data frame with line items as well. And now you have what you need to write this data to a database like Google BigQuery or use it for insight generation. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for similar content in the future. Thanks for watching.